Okay, over the weekend, Giannis Antetokounmpo unfollowed his Bucks teammates on social media. Although, in fairness, I want to point out he actually unfollowed just about anyone he is not related to. This came on the same day that he met with Bucks co-owner Mark Lazary. It was a three-hour lunch meeting to discuss the state of the franchise, according to our Adrian Wojnarowski. Woj also reporting Lazary made it clear the ownership group will spend enough with the luxury tax to deliver him a championship-supporting cast. Chene, what do you think is going on in Giannis's head right now? If it was you, what would you be thinking and what would be important to you in that lunch meeting or on social media or with your family? What will be going through your head? Yeah, first of all, you make a really great distinction, Rachel, because if I'm his teammate, I'm like, Giannis unfollowed you. That's what everyone's probably going to do. You go and you're like, oh, he unfollowed everyone. I'm good. I'm good. I'm not reading too much into that. But um, I think this is more so about no distractions because their season obviously had a disappointing end. But what I do like is the fact that immediately they saw the priorities. Giannis himself talking with, you know, ownership. Ownership being the highest uh, chain of command that shows how important he is, you know, to, to this franchise and, and how they want to make sure he's happy, but most importantly, make sure that he believes in their successful future. And, and speaking of, Mar you know, Mark Lazary, um, it's funny because the last two games I did the celebrity game, and he's out there hooping. Like, I mean, I'm not going to say he was the best one out there, but he was out there hooping. And so this is a guy that will do whatever it takes. I know a part of the conversation talked about, you know, saying we're not afraid of going too far. I don't know how too far it is when you're in the luxury tax. But, like, you know, too far to make sure that we put the right pieces around, you know, when it comes to, you know, making the right moves just financially because they're in that tough situation as a franchise with the cap. Um, so, yeah, I, I think this is more so about Giannis understanding that, look, I'm two-time I'm two -time defensive, uh, two-time MVP, defensive player of the year. The expectations have fallen so much on me. Now, what, what are, who's going to keep that same energy, you know, especially when it comes to a franchise and ha having the conversation to talk that out and most importantly, plan it out, hoping that it's not too late, especially going into the last year of his deal. Giannis is not the type of guy who sends messages through social media following and unfollowing. That's just never who he's been, and I would be stunned if that's what was happening here. Um, from what I understand, this meeting with Mark Lazary was a meeting. It wasn't the meeting. And I know that's a distinction there, but the meeting will be when the Bucks offer him the contract extension. And if that, when that formally happens, that's a massive moment that a lot of Giannis has to think about a lot, and so do the Bucks. And I do know Mark Lazary, and I know what I know about him is that he is very confident and yet very laid back. Um, he is the exact type of guy that you want to have philosophical discussions about because he is open-minded and he will have strong opinions, but he'll listen to what you have to say. So I, I think it was probably a very pleasant three-hour dis uh, discussion. I doubt anything was resolved, but the fact that they're talking and that Giannis is focusing on next season is a positive sign for the Bucks. Yeah, well, Woj also reporting that Mike Budenholzer is expected to be back next season to coach the team. Brian, what do you think of that? Let's just start with the bud aspect first. What do you think of that? Because the non-con bud has been great regular season coach, doesn't make adjustments in the playoffs, and there were critics during that series with the Miami Heat that the adjustments weren't made. What do you think of that aspect of the report? Yeah, and it's fair. Uh, it's fair to criticize how Mike Budenholzer's teams have performed in the playoffs because generally they have underperformed in his tenure. And that's something that they've got to deal with. But they also have to work on other things on the roster. And Giannis has a very good relationship with Mike Budenholzer. And, you know, I think that, you know, one, you know Giannis's opinion would matter, but I don't even think Giannis would even need to make a statement on something like that. You either know whether your coach supports your, uh, whether your player supports your coach or not. You don't even have to ask if you have your, your finger on the pulse of your players. And John Horst and Mark Lazary and the Bucks ownership do. And so I think the Bucks have more things to do with their roster than they have to, would have to do with their coach. I absolutely agree. I'm not so, you know, worried about the coaching. I think, you know, when you're in the court of public opinion where a lot of people criticize how things played out, not just the expectations on Giannis, but also on Coach Bud, that sort of will correct itself more so. I think the idea is who's going to help doing the correcting on the floor. Um, the question is going to be how do you retool, you know, this roster? And I know it's going to be a difficult task, but the goal is to surround Giannis with as much talent that can compete and not make him feel like he has to do so much. I know we were all impressed for, with him 
averaging 30 and 14 and 6 on less minutes than the season before. But it's sort of like, do you want him doing that? Don't you want him just playing basketball free without the whole expectation that he has to be the savior for this franchise? Because if you look at the, the nature of the NBA, no one team that is successful is doing it by themselves. I know Chris Middleton made some strides, but to me, most importantly, it's finding a top-tier guard a guard that he can play with. But most importantly, Giannis sort of has the free reign because there's not necessarily a guard that stands out where he's going to be like, oh, I'm going to outlet the ball to you. You need to have someone that he outlets the ball to and can sort of play off ball in the pick and roll, in the post where it's his strengths, instead of bringing the ball up and them having, like the Miami Heat he did, that wall on the free throw line where they can game plan and strategize. So I think that's the big question. How will this team look coming next season or even in the future? Well, it's going to be interesting. We'll have to see if uh, there are some phone calls made between the Milwaukee front office and, I don't know, maybe the front office in Oklahoma City. Who knows? Who knows where that guard could come from? Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.